This is Sam Husseini for The Real News. The Formula One Grand Prix just went ahead in Bahrain despite human rights objections over holding such an event in a country gripped by an uprising for two years, prompting a fresh wave of protests. During that time, the U.S. and Saudi-backed monarchy there has limited media access, exacerbating the minimal media coverage the uprising in the Gulf monarchy has received. I was able to get into Bahrain recently and interviewed Saeed Yusuf al Muftaha of the Bahrain Center for Human Rights. The president of that group, Nabil Rajab, continues to be jailed by the regime along with other human rights activists. al Muftaha, who I interviewed, was jailed for a month late last year for tweeting information about human rights abuses by the regime against protesters. al Muftaha recently wrote, the United States is one of the countries supporting the Bahraini regime despite the Obama administration's claims to be on the side of democracy and human rights. Why does the administration often stay so silent on the situation in Bahrain and not announce its support for the legitimate demands of the Bahrainis to peaceful protest and for self-determination? We know Bahrain hosts a major U.S. military base. That is why it is so important for them to speak up for us to, and to say we are people who deserve democracy. I asked al Muftaha about repression in Bahrain and the course of the uprisings just before the Formula One or F1 Grand Prix that was just held in Bahrain and just as protests against it were starting. I interviewed him across the street from the police headquarters where he was recently imprisoned. I was arrested here for one month. They, they kept me uh, here one month for a tweet. I, w I tweet what's happening in my country, so I was kept for one month. Uh, and, and they did not take me to the main jail because I'm the head of documentation in Bahrain Center for Human Rights. So the last time I was arrested last year, uh, I went to the main jail and I have documented all the cases of the prisoner who were arrested, mistreatment, torture. So that's why the, it's the second time when they arrested me, they kept me here with one Asian uh, prisoner who cannot speak my language, so I cannot document. So I was almost in a solitary confinement, but uh, I cannot say in a solitary confinement because there is one Asian who cannot speak my language. Also, not to, to let me document what's happening uh, in the media because my mistake in the first time that I was arrested, I document all the cases and when I go went out I speak to media I told I, I say thank you to the government for allowing me to document the cases that I cannot document while I was outside <laughs> so I think they have learned of that mistake <laughs> and this is uh, uh, the next time when we arrested him uh, make sure that we kept him somewhere else uh, so they kept me here in the last nice place uh, in the uh, Hura police station now your tweet wasn't even really political, it was talking about what was happening during the protest. Exactly, my the tweet that I was arrested for, it was in English, and I say, shotgun injury in the capital, Manama. That's it. And they say that it is false information and uh, no injury, but I, I, I no, there was injury and I documented myself and I take picture uh, of him. Uh, and they know that they, they just want to discredit my credibility. I have credibility. I have 83,000 following me on Twitter inside Bahrain, credible source in Bahrain, the media inside Bahrain and outside Bahrain, they trust me and trust my tweets. So that's why, why they are angry about my, my human rights work. So they, that's why they arrested me, especially that they arrested me one week after when I was in uh, Bruxelles. I, I met with the MPs, EU MPs in the, in the Bruxelles, and I talk, told him about what's happening in my country. So one week after I was uh, arrested. So in general, they are angry about my work, and also uh, they benefit of it so they can uh, discredit my credibility. But it will not happen at all. They know, even the government, they know that I don't lie, I don't publish false information. All what I publish, I witness myself, uh, I witness myself uh, and I take picture. A, a cab driver who drove me today from the airport said there aren't much protests, uh, they, they, they're no more. Maybe once in a while he said someone will burn a tire in the streets to block traffic. Well, is that accurate? What do you 
say about that? One hour ago, I was just in a protest, tens of thousands in the, in the street, demanding democracy and freedom in a village called Sitra. But there are 40 villages protesting on a daily basis from 2011 till today. Yes, we were suppressed, killed, 100 protesters killed, 1,000 were tortured, 1,000 were arrested. Uh, 35 Shia mosques has been demolished as a collective punishment. Uh, 1,000 were suspended from their walks as a collective punishment to those who attend the protest. Uh, we have paid a very high cost for uh, our demanding for democracy and freedom. But still, for, and even uh, Saudi troops came to my country, GCC troops co came to my country to take part of the crackdown. But even with that, did not work the stop. Now there are tens of thousands, and even the capital Manama. But the government don't allow the protests in the capital Manama at all. And they have arrested uh, hundreds of protesters who were arrested, who were protesting in the capital Manama. They don't want in, in the capital anyone to protest. They don't want the media and the journalists and foreigners to see what's happening. They just want to hide what's happening to make it only in the villages and, uh, and far away from the capital. But still, till yesterday night, no. Yesterday night was a protest against the Formula One in the capital Manama, and it was attacked. Uh, what happened? Uh, as uh, usual, they they attack the protest with the uh, tear gas and shotgun and uh, rubber bullets. After that, the collective punishment will start. Collective punishment, I mean, the riot police will come and will shoot tear gas inside the house, inside the window. The window. We have video of police uh, putting a tear gas inside the house, and uh, as a collective punishment. And because of that policy. Uh, 30 uh, citizens were died because of that. Most of them are uh, old or ch children or women. They cannot make it, especially the children and uh, the old men, according to the United Nations and the Human Rights Organization. And also many uh, injury uh, because of that policy from the short range. We have documented protesters uh, killed from uh, close range of the tear gas. <coughs> they use the tear gas as a weapon, even physician for human rights. American organizations called Physician for Human Rights. Uh, they came to Bahrain and they published a report about how uh, weaponizing the tear gas uh, in Bahrain and how uh, the tear gas has been used in Bahrain as a weapon. And they have documented also uh, people, protesters who were killed and protesters who suffocated from tear gas. Coming up with the Formula One, what do you expect to have happen in the next couple of days, week? You know, uh, <coughs> even last year it was. Uh, uh, many protests against the F1, and even this year, uh, before the F1 came to Bahrain, and uh, in the last two weeks, uh, many protests against F1, especially in the villages very close to the F1. Uh, but because of F1, I mean, uh, we are not against the sport and uh, the F1, but because of F1, they came to Bahrain, a crackdown has started in my country. 50 protesters were arrested in the last two weeks, especially who lives in the villages next to the F1. So the crackdown was focused on the villages to make them silent in the period of uh, F1. Uh, I ha we have issued a report in Bahrain Center for Human Rights for protesters being kidnapped, beaten, tortured, and then released, uh, tortured in secret detention. And also many house raids, uh, uh, school has been raided. Today morning, uh, the riot police stormed my school and they have kidnapped a student, a seven years old student. And then after that, they showed tear gas inside the school. So, uh, you know, we have people being arrested, house raid, checkpoint, uh, uh, many injury. Uh, we have documented three serious injury from a close range to the head. Also, in the protest that was against the F1, one one woman protest against the F1 in Samahij three days ago, and they have shot a woman. Her name is Sara Smai, 18 years old. She was shot in her head from close range, and she was taken to the hospital. And also, we have documented two. Uh, protesters were shot by tear gas and from close range. All of them are suffering, unfortunately, because of F1. Because of the F1 coming to Bahrain, so the government is trying to suppress them. Also, as you know, the media are not covering my country in Bahrain, and the only time, the, uh, the F1 time, is, so that's why there are many journalists here coming in Bahrain. So the government, they don't want them to see what's happening. Uh, Bahrain, so they want to crack down them, so at least they 
be sure that the journalists will not see anything. And even if they will see, they will see just a few uh, people. I just came one hour ago from a protest in South Tanzania industry. They will not be afraid. Uh, in the martial law, uh, three month martial law, people have been killed even in the street. Day after when the martial law has been finished, the tens of thousands went out in the, in the street. You cannot imagine how people, uh, people of Bahrain are very strict and, uh, and they are struggling for freedom from many years, not, from, uh, not even when the Arab Spring started in the Middle East. You said earlier to me that from Bahrain and half million immigrant yeah. Yeah. workers, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Asia, Asia, South Asia and so on, uh, what, what is their status? Do they have rights in Bahrain? Have they participated at all in the protests? Or are they two separate worlds, two separate things? No, no uh, at all. The migrants, uh, they don't uh, participate in the protests at all in my country. Because many of them are poor, they, go, they came from poor country and they just want to live and, uh, and uh, to have to find a good job and that's it. So that's why uh, you know, I mean, uh, participating in a protest in Bahrain, calling for democracy, is a very high cost. It's not an easy. It's not like uh, U.S., U.K. They allow freedom of expression uh, in Bahrain. You know, in, in, in my country, the Zakaria Al Ashiri, he's a blogger. Two years ago, he wrote an article uh, in, in the internet in his website talking about the crackdown that has been started uh, in Bahrain. Two days after he was kidnapped from his own, tortured till death. I know many of them, I sit with many of them, they are in solidarity with us. They say, well, we know that you are struggling and fighting for democracy and freedom and human rights, and we do respect that. And now, these immigrants, it's very difficult or impossible for them to become citizens, right? <laughs> yes, it is very impossible, but only for political issues, for example, no, uh, the government of Bahrain, they are giving nationality uh, yeah. to, yes, to many uh, people outside Bahrain, but those who are working in the police, for example, the police in Bahrain, 70-80% uh, of them, they are not Bahraini. <laughs> they are bring from Pakistan, Syria, uh, even Jordan, Yemen, India, uh, Bangladesh. Those who are working in the police, in the same day he came to Bahrain, he will get nationality, and it is not legal that uh, someone come from outside and one day you get nationality. It's not legal, but uh, there is the, the law is not implemented in my country. We are not in a state of law. Uh, when you see the attitude of the government giving nationality just because of political uh, uh, political reason, uh, the, we are in Bahrain, the majority are Shia. They bring people from outside giving them nationality. All of them are Sunni just to make a balance. It's not, uh, I mean, it's a political, so that's why we call it the political naturalization, naturalization in, in Bahrain, just uh, to be, to take part of the crackdown and also to make a balance between the opposition and uh, because most of the Shia and other are in the opposition and there are Sunni and Shia in the opposition, but uh, they just want to make balance uh, between them. I interviewed Al Muhafta on April 16th. Since then, the Formula One race has come and gone to Bahrain, but the democracy movement and the repression continue. The race was won by a team sponsored by the drink Red Bull. Formula One race boss Bernie Eccleston wound up commenting that the Bahraini government was, quote, stupid to hold a Grand Prix because of the so-called opportunity it posed to political protesters. Asked whether he would ever consider taking F1 to other countries experiencing political unrest, such as Syria, Eccleston replied, quote, We'd have to have a look and see. Close quote. For the real news, this is Sam Husseini.